two, three, let's go. Wednesday afternoon. No. No. You know, so they can get they can get a really rubbish coach and they still be winning. I don't understand what the science behind Real Madrid always winning their mm. games. I don't understand what the science is. And I think it was Jude, Jude Bellingham. And there was something online about him not having scored. I think in eight eight games, he hasn't scored a single not like, game. Not like him, is it? Not, not like, like him, him yeah. yeah. And and I and we know, you and I know, he's an exceptionally good footballer. Um, and I started thinking, well, you're winning games. What's the problem? Just, just let him yeah. be, you know. But then I thought, maybe that's what makes Real Madrid. You know, you have to be on top of your game. Mm. The moment mm. you're not... They, they they call him for they call yeah. him for the slaughterhouse yeah. then you know just you know yeah uh get rid of him that sort of thing and i i don't really <laughs> i don't really understand why they keep winning i mean they all right so they've never lost a game this season i don't think i don't think they've lost a game this season i know they draw they, there was a they drew one game um where and then and then the fans were criticizing uh Kylian Mbappe for you know for for poor display in in, the, in that match mm. and I, I'm just thinking what is behind Real Madrid I mean Barcelona is not like that I mean Barcelona um they, they're almost as good as Real Madrid but they're not up yeah. to that class of Real Madrid and yet they're pretty close they're pretty close I they, think aren't they they're pretty close yeah but then yeah. They, they had um, I think years ago they had Messi play for them didn't they well yeah they had him uh, up to yeah. a couple of years ago didn't yeah they? two uh, or three uh, yeah. years ago perhaps. yeah up until 2022 I think um, yeah and yeah. and I still cannot understand why can't other teams be like that what's so special about them I know Carlos An An Ancelotti um, he's not particularly he's not a world class coach I know no that. he's not like Zidane is he he's no, not like he's, Zidane, it's, it's Zidane. Not. no he's not no. and yet and yet he's winning games yeah so that brings the question bro the question it, it brings a totally different question when I look at Real Madrid alright I look at other, other football teams and I think you know you've got to you've, you've got to win and lose that's football um so with Real Madrid, they seem to have that winning mentality. It's like we have to win at all cost. When I saw the game, when I saw the two, when when they were down two 0 yesterday, I thought, this yeah, this this is it. You know, this is football. But then when they came back from two 0 down to then win by five goals, I thought, what is behind well, yeah. what is behind this spectacular performance that they're performing? Mm -hmm. Now the, the, here's the thing. Maybe, maybe, bro, and I, I and I'm saying this with caution. Maybe it's not about the coaches. Maybe we're attacking the wrong people. You know, because every time a team's not performing well, we heap the blame mm. on the coach and we say he's got to go. You know, um, he's got to go. We've got to bring in somebody new and blah 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 blah. Yeah, and then they bring in somebody new. And then sometimes it makes a difference, sometimes it doesn't. So maybe it's the team. Maybe it's the football team. Or maybe there's some spell, magical spell there. <laughs> no, it's a it's a hard one, isn't it? I mean it's it's, it's a it's an age old debate, you know, the, the manager or the coach yeah. or the players. You know who who has the greater influence you know sometimes if if a team's playing badly not really performing that well like palace at the moment there's a lot of people say well you know the managers perhaps lost the dressing room which is the expression um or perhaps he's not hard enough perhaps the coaching tactics are not particularly great so the manager obviously does shoulder a lot of responsibility um and you think of someone like alex ferguson who our family and the ladies, Dr. Gladys and Phantom, 
uh, Rose, we all have a lovely show every weekday. So join us for a lovely show. Say hello to Phantom, Dr. Glass. And we say he's got to go, you know. Um, he's got to go. We've got to bring in somebody new and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And then they bring in somebody new. And then sometimes it makes a difference. Sometimes it doesn't. So maybe it's the team. Maybe it's the football team. Or maybe there's some spell, magical spell there. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a it's a hard one, isn't it? I mean, it's it's, it's, a, it's an age old debate, you know, the, the the manager or the coach, yeah, or the players, you know, who who has the greater influence, you know. Sometimes if if a team's playing badly, not really performing that well, like Palace at the moment, there's a lot of people say, well, you know, the manager's perhaps lost the dressing room, which is the expression, um, or perhaps he's not hard enough. Perhaps the coaching tactics are not particularly great. So the manager obviously does shoulder a lot of responsibility. Um, and you think of someone like Alex Ferguson, who possibly was the most successful manager, certainly in, in, in this country and possibly in the world. I don't, I don't know there's too many other managers who achieved what he did although he had a long time to do it, 27 years, I think, at Man United. Yeah. But so there's a lot of responsibility on the manager, quite clearly. And we know a good manager who would, most people would define as a good manager, Ferguson, Guardiola, Klopp, they do achieve a lot of things the teams do. So, so that's one aspect. But equally, some fans, when it's not working, say, well, yeah, the, the players have got to take their share of the blame. They're not, they're not responding. They're not running hard enough. They don't look, don't look fit enough. Um, it's just not the, they're not the, they look disinterested. So it's a bit of a, a, a never-ending debate about who who has more responsibility. I mean, I guess a board of owners will sack a manager when it's not working, right. which gives the impression they think it's all down to the manager, because I guess they can't very easily sack the team or some of the team. So they go for what they can control. They will change the manager in the knowledge, as I've just said, that the very best managers will usually achieve a lot so you can't really imagine Guardiola going to another team after Man City he said he wouldn't you know and as Klopp has said they won't take another team in the Premier League understandably but they you think wherever they might go they will still be successful you kind of just know that because they've got that special sprinkle of magic dust on them which they put on the players that's another part of it so I think the coach does make a huge difference but of course another element is that they tend to be these guys these managers tend to be at the best clubs the richest clubs so those clubs like man city real madrid barcelona and so on they've got the resources to to buy the best players now we said about you know an open blank canvas isn't always a good thing but actually if you can go and put an offer in for lionel messi or in his heyday and others you are going to attract the best players and of course players then want to go to those teams the best players you know they they aspire to go to, to those teams a bit like michael elise from palace he wanted champions league football which of course he's got with with uh, bayern munich yeah they want to go to the best team so in a sense real madrid i mean i mean as i can't i don't know really but i think they're they're record of success their track record goes back a long time i don't think this is just a 21st century phenomenon i think it does go back into the 20th century as well they've just had this continuity um which doesn't seem to doesn't seem subject to the usual cycle the usual cycles of football i mean you take take germany as an international team there's always been this incredible rivalry really between Germany and England it'll yeah. be interesting to see how Thomas Tuchel does in January when he takes over the England team I hope he does well um, but there's always been the, the Germans going back a long time have always produced good teams when they you know the team evolves the players get old they they don't play for the international team anymore but they still seem to replace them with good players better players it's only recently really I'd say the last 
I don't know, last four or five years, they don't seem to be quite as good, the Germans, as as they always were. Maybe they're coming back a bit now. But again, that is just the cycle, the cycle nature of football, or yeah. many, many games, I suppose. But somehow, Real Madrid, I agree with you, seem to be an exception. They don't seem as yet subject to that. And it will be interesting to look back at their records in their domestic league. And I mean, I think they've won more European Cups, which is now the Champions League, than any other team. I mean, it, they've done it so many times. Won about so 15, all the, all, 15 times, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. remarkable. But it, as I say, I think it goes back a long way. So there's something there. I mean, it sounds a bit silly, perhaps, but maybe the climate. I, I sometimes think, you know, Madrid, real Madrid. Yeah, Madrid is a great place, as is Barcelona. But wow. the, they have warmer, hotter weather. I mean, English players, we're told, prefer to play in in the rain and the <laughs> and it used to be the mud. You look at some pitch, pit, um, pitches yeah. and you see old clips in even the 90s and even early 2000s. Some of those pitches were mud baths, really, yeah. after a bit of rain. Yeah. Um, but if you're if you're in a country which doesn't have too much rain, and certainly the climate is good, the players enjoy living in that climate. If life has a big feel-good factor to add to the talents and the ability they've got, that could that could be that one or two percentage points that make that difference. I mean, every team and any sport they look these days for those one percentage points improvements. You know, whether it's what the players eat. Uh, how they live their lifestyle and so on. So every little thing can count for a lot. And a good manager probably will have his own 1% or whatever to add to that, to to know, to get more out of these players, more ability. But if you've got a, a very ha happy, settled bunch of footballers yeah. in a confident team where you've got the best players from the world, then it's not hard to see how that continues. But it still defies the fact that most football teams go through downtimes, they do, yeah. almost Absolutely. by definition. One yeah. one area we haven't mentioned is, of course, is that with respect to the Spanish League, I don't believe it's as competitive as the Premier League. No. It doesn't mean to say it's not the same quality. They're very quality teams there, but the Premier League is thought to be the most competitive. And it will, it will be fascinating to see how... Real Madrid or Barcelona performed in the Premier League. It would be a joy to watch, to see, to do a season's football in in, a, in another league, for them to come over here or play the games and to see if they just walked away with it. I don't think they would. I don't think they would. Um, but we'll probably never know, sadly. But that could be quite a good... That would attract the fans, wouldn't it? Get, for the top teams in the, in the countries, spending a season... You know, like Man City going to spend the season in the Italian league, yeah. Real Madrid coming here, and so on. It would be quite an interesting, uh, quite an interesting thing to do, wouldn't it? I think you're selling a, a Netflix show here. This is yeah. <laughs> well, in fact, if you go back two or three years, do you remember there was going to be this? I think the six top Super. clubs in this country they Super wanted league. to join this Super League, wasn't it? Super, yeah. And it was actually quite roundly criticised by yeah. fans. And football's, you know, people who run football in this country, that was roundly condemned as betraying our own fans and our own people. So it didn't happen. But something along that idea um, could could actually be very interesting to watch. I think really yours would be. be. I think I think your idea is uh, is uh, is definitely it's a quite a good idea, isn't it? Yeah. It, yeah. It's, uh, that's a Netflix show right there. You know. <laughs> if you if you hear anybody else say that now, you must let me know because oh, I should be suing them. Yeah, we'll have so, to. Yeah. Uh, they say you need one really good idea in life, and I think I've just come up with it. So that could, so don't you dare steal it either, any other cars. Don't you dare steal that idea. I might have a word with the bosses at Real Madrid later on, see if they're interested. <laughs> you never know. That's how. Things yeah. happen. Someone I know. thinks that's, that's a really good idea. I know. That's you a really you good never idea. know because you just said it. Uh, <laughs> I was thinking something different. I was thinking, what well, if you took uh, Real Madrid um, and you played them in in a, in, a, in, a, in an English league, or no, sorry, the players. You took Real Madrid players and you you put a Manchester United shirt on them, for instance, or you put a Crystal Palace. Would they still be 
playing at mm. that capacity, you know, that we know Real Madrid to be. It's just an in interesting one as well. Well, if you did you say if you say took three of their players, is that what no, you if said? You, if, you took, if you took a whole squad, the whole team, different, yeah. put a different shirt on them, and and have them play as as a different, yeah, yeah. Would it as still, if they suddenly would be. They would suddenly become Crystal Palace. I, yeah. <laughs> at the moment, I would say no, not, not much chance of that. But I know what you mean. Sometimes, I mean, it's, it, I read something the other day, funnily enough, I think yeah. it was yesterday as it happened, about people, me, meaning all of us, we can behave differently depending on how we're dressed on that day. Absolutely. You know, if, 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 if you, you know, when I used to be in finance, yeah. much of the time I was in a, in a, smart suits shirt and yeah. tie and you sort of you feel the part you you, you, you get a confidence Clo clothes are known to give people confidence women and men depending on what they feel comfortable in and so on so yeah. we do become what we wear so on that basis i think there's a case for saying the rare soft family and the ladies dots of gladys and phantom and rose we all have a lovely show every weekday. So join us for a lovely show. Say hello to Phantom.